Hi, welcome to the Craft Channel. My name's Corinne Brad, and today I've got a project for you which I think hopefully people will find quite handy because I tend to keep my phone in a case rather than a, a fancy background case. Keeps the screen from getting scratched, but as you can see, my phone case is getting really quite old and dilapidated. So I've made myself a new phone case. Out of leather, it's nice and snug. And you've got a nice cutout design on the front of the leather that's backed with fabric. And I've been able to do that cutout design because I've used the Cricut Maker. And there's various bits of software that you can make your own designs. And also it makes cutting the leather so much easier because when I've done it by hand, I can never get two rectangles the same size. I don't know why. But what you need to start with is just some scraps of upholstery leather. These are about a millimetre and a half thick. Um, if you're like me, you see offcuts at car boot sales or on eBay and you go, oh, I must buy them, so you end up with a whole suitcase full of them. I've got here a nice piece of pale blue. This is actually about two millimetres thick, but it shouldn't be any problem whatsoever. And what I'm just going to do, something that I've learnt through trial and error, because our phone cases have a cutout with a fabric behind, I'm just going to iron on a piece of um, sort of heat and bond. It's a, an applique hot milk glue. It makes life so much easier. You don't have to faff about with a glue stick. I'm just going to pop it on here and I'm just going to double check on my computer exactly where I want to put it because I've done my design of two rectangles with a B cut out of it. I'm just going to press the hot melt adhesive onto the leather. What you're supposed to do is actually wait till it cools down before you peel away the backing. But you know me, I like to do things in a hurry. While that's cooling, I'm just going to point out that with the Cricut Maker, you've got interchangeable blades. So the one that I'm going to use today is actually rotary cutter. It's like a mini version of this that automatically moves through a gearing system. And because it's a rotary cutter, it doesn't drag, it doesn't pull. So it's great for cutting things like denim, leather. I think it will also cut thin balsa wood and it simply fits into the carriage like all the other blades and the gearing system sets up. And what you do need to make sure that you do is when you're setting up to cut, you set your material and it will automatically tell you what blade you need. So I'm going to set this up for heavy fabrics like denim. And I'm just going to put slightly more pressure on it. So now it's cooled down, I'm going to peel away the backing paper and I'm going to make myself some room so I know what I'm doing. Take my protective cover off of my cutting mat and what you want to do is you want to put your leather on your cutting mat and you want to do it leather side down instead of suede side down. It makes much less mess. And if you do this, what you also want to remember is if you've put initials on your phone case, you will need to mirror the image. But as this is just a, a B motif, there's no one right or wrong way of doing it. So, that's in there. Load it into the machine. Just going to bring that machine forward a touch to make sure it's got enough room at the back and press cut. So while that's cutting, I'm going to cut myself a piece of fabric that's going to form the background of the bee. I'm going to make sure it's large enough to cover the sticky area that I've already put on the mat. Because unless you're really clever, you can't get that sticky background positioned perfectly. But as long as you cover it up with a piece of fabric, it doesn't matter. Now to cut something like this with the rotary cutter is going to take slightly longer than with a normal swivel blade. But the results are so much better, so much cleaner. So 
So that's now finished its cutting. Let's just close that up a sec. Oh, actually, no, I don't want to close that up because I need a little tool here. And then what you should be able to do is just peel your backing off, like so. Peel off the back of your case. And then the temptation is to peel off the front of that case all in one. What I would recommend is that you try and just peel it off with your cutout more or less in place. If you're doing something that's like a monogram or something like that, that hasn't got as many fiddly bits, you'll be okay. But something like this bee design, because he has numerous legs and antennae and wings, I want to lay him down more or less in his entirety. And before I do anything else, I'm just gonna cover that mask up. Because what I now need to do is put my iron back on again. I need to iron the fabric onto the back. So let's just pull this out. And as you can see, I mean, it, it's not the fastest job in the world, but actually it's cut that B shape out to a millimetre thick leather brilliantly. It's left me with the outline. So I'm just going to make sure that I cover all of that sticky bit with my fabric. And make sure you put your fabric so the pattern side is down, so the pattern actually shows through the cutout. Let's give that a good old iron to make sure it's stuck on there well. And it's worth taking a little bit of time to make sure that is stuck on well because obviously this will be in the inside of your case. What you don't want it to do is you don't want the, your phone to keep catching it every time it goes through. And then I'm just going to trim away the excess fabric without cutting my perfectly cut leather. There you go. So there you've got your back and your front. Let's get rid of my ironing board a second. You need to glue your front to your back. You don't need to glue it. I find that if you do glue it, um, it just holds it in place while you're doing the next step. So you don't need a lot of glue, just a line of something like this uh, Gutterman HT2, HT2 textile glue. It's like a spirit-based glue. It's got quite a quick grab to it, as it were. And just apply one layer or one line of glue to one half of your case, leaving the, the top edge open. And then lay your rectangles on the top. Line them up. Check that they're lined up. And while the glue is still tacky, you can just manipulate it to make sure they are completely lined up. And I love working with leather. I love, I love buying leather offcuts because otherwise they just go to waste. But I don't have all the tools and equipment that most people do have. You know, when you look at sort of proper leather wallets and things like that, they've had all the edges burred down and, and some sort of enzyme that you put to seal the edges of the, the leather. One day when I can get all the stuff, but one thing I have got, I have got a few leather working tools and I've got this thing here which is like a line gauge. And what you do is you have this point here and this guide and you simply run it down the edge of your leather and it makes a score line in the leather without cutting it. Now, if you don't have one of these, you can obviously quite easily do it with a ruler and a soft pencil. And another thing that I invested in is a proper leather hole punch. 
So you've got chisel tips there. And essentially, you line it up. And what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to hit it with a hammer. Now, bearing in mind, I've now got to put lines all the way down this. And I've got a microphone on. I'm not going to hit it with a hammer. I am just going to give it a good push down. And because they are quite sharp chisel tips, they'll go into your leather quite easily. So, you know, if you want to make something, if the kids have all gone to bed and you want to make something like this, you don't have to do it with a hammer. And you can see they do go through to the other side. Let me just turn that iron off while I think of it. So what you would do is you would run a line of stitch holes all the way around the outside, as I have on this bead design here. And then there's two ways you can sew it up. What you can do is you can, and again, I've used brown thread on an oxblood case, but you can run an over sew stitch, or you can run a running stitch and then run back again. But what I would recommend you do is make sure that you cut your piece of extra strong thread longer than you're going to think you need it. Because it's quite nice to be able to sew this case up in its entirety without any knots or breaks in the thread. Run through your first stitch hole a couple of times at the top of the case because that is the part of the case that will have the most stress on it. So you need to bind it. And then you can go down. Oh, where's my stitch? Oh, there it is. I'm going to do this actually so it almost looks like a blanket stitch. I'm going to go down perpendicular to the hole and then diagonal to the hole just to make a decorative edging. So you go down into one hole and then back through the same hole so that each time you've got a straight stitch and a slanted stitch. And a design like this, you will obviously use more thread because you're making two stitches for each hole instead of just one. But it's quite nice to be able to play about with the sewing up of the case. You know, even if you do it in two different contrasting colours. But take care not to pull your stitching too tight. I've found that upholstery leather is actually quite flexible and if you're not careful, you can pull your stitching too tight and then it will ruck it up. Now this one, when I first did it, it did look quite puckered, but actually as the leather has relaxed and the stitching has relaxed, it's quite a flat finish on it. But very easy to make, and it's so easy to make with the addition of the Cricut Maker, because it has just made life so much easier. Perfect cutting, perfect matching up. All you need to do is the graph work, which is punch the holes in, and stitch it together. So I hope you like that. I hope you'll all be going around replacing your old exhausted phone cases with something that's a little bit newer and a little bit nicer, like I'm going to now. And we'll see you again very soon. Thank you for watching. If you've been inspired to create, please share your makes with us in the comments section below. And if you've enjoyed videos by The Crafts Channel, hit the like button. Want to see more of us? Then click subscribe. See you next time.